After helping to feed Qatar for decades, this mill on Doha's waterfront will be given a new role by replacing flour with art. These towering silos are 35 metres tall and 8.5 metres wide. Now, the relationship between artists, curators and industrial spaces like this isn't new. However, what Qatar Museum aims to do is to create a gallery while keeping the industrial integrity intact. We wanted to keep as much of the existing structures as possible. But there's also history, there's memory. The bread for Doha comes from here. And the project is expansive, covering more than 80,000 square meters. Is this a big building or a small city? Because when measuring the site compared to other institutions, this is several times the Venice Biennale or the Tate. So the answer is both. In a nearby gallery, Sheikha Miriam Abdani tells us the entire waterfront area will be transformed into a cultural hub. Qatar is being ambitious and we're trying to show um, international art collections and regional art collections on the Corniche. And for them, if they do come back in 2030, are able to see the realization uh, of, these, of these dreams and these plans that we have as a country. Qatar's cultural plans don't stop there. This temporary gallery called Tales of a Connected World gives a peek into the design of the new museum in the brand new city of Lusail by Pritzker Prize winning architects Herzog and Demuron. Inside, each room is defined by color, soundscapes and looks at the influence of Middle Eastern and Islamic art in the wider world. We try to come from a point of view which is not the usual point of view of museums, because museums tend to be very colonial or post-colonial. So it was very important to bring in music, to bring in... Uh, actually, uh, we're going to work on uh, workshops to be able to bring food and perfume also. With big plans to transform its waterfronts into cultural hubs, Qatar's goal is to extend its impact far beyond the FIFA World Cup. Laura Bird Manley, Al Jazeera, Doha.